blessings and glory and honor they all belong to you blessings and glory and honor they all belong to you the blessings and glory and honor they all belong to you blessings and glory and honor they all belong to you the blessings and glory and honor they all belong to you thank you jesus Reminding us of that every single day. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. 
love you, Jesus. Thank you. We love you, Jesus. Thank you. We love you, Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how we love Jesus. Oh, you're magnificent. You're wonderful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us pray, blessed God. We do love you as your people. We are so grateful and so thankful to be in your presence. Lord God, there's so many that wish they could be here. So many that have gone on to be with you. But your new mercies met us this morning. Woke us up in our right mind, gave us the activity of our limbs. Your grace is the reason that we are able to be and to gather. And so, oh God, we've come for one reason and one reason only. And that is to magnify and to glorify you. And so, spirit of the living God, fall fresh in this place. You're welcome here. Not only is your presence welcome here, but your power, your leading, your directing is welcome. We yield ourselves to you. Have your way in this house. Have your way and send a double portion of your anointing on everything that is done. Be glorified, O oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Saints of God, if you would turn with us to hymn number 189, we will be singing, It is well with our soul. Verses number one, two, and then verse four. Let us sing together when peace. Sorrows, whatever my life, Well,
more and more. Shall resound. as well with your soul your circumstances may not be well but it is well with my soul hallelujah to the name of the Lord our God and it is well with our soul because we can go to our father in prayer take to him all of our concerns all of our worries all our cares the Bible says that we can cast our cares upon him because he cares for us so at this time we are going to gather our hearts together for altar prayer whatever your need is get it on your mind now whatever your concern is Whatever is burdening your heart, imagine it and come and bring it at the altar, symbolically leaving it at the feet of Jesus Christ, knowing that he is well able to take care of everything that we place to his hands. Let us pray. Blessed God, we do thank you because it is your will for us to give thanks. In every situation and every circumstance, you're worthy of our praise. And oh God, we give it to you freely. We give it to you joyfully. We give it to you, oh God, out of the abundance of our hearts. Lord God, we as your people are gathered together. Blessed God, we pray, oh Lord, that you would look upon your people with favor. That Holy One of Israel, you would be with us. And by your spirit, you will lead us and guide us. Lord, there are so many concerns, so many uh, things that we are troubled with. But Lord God, you are Lord of it all. And so, blessed God, we leave it at this altar. All the heaviness, God, we leave it at the altar. All the worry, we leave it at the altar. And by faith, we walk away from it knowing that, God, you are going to do what's best. And that you have everything in control. Blessed God, I pray that you would continue 
to do a work here at Ebenezer Baptist Church that you would continue to bring us together and one in the spirit and one in the faith that you would continue, O oh God, to transform us into the people that you are calling for in this last and evil days, that you will uh, continue, O oh God, to make us disciples so that we can make disciples of others, that you would continue to shine your light through us so that those in darkness can see the light and come out of darkness. Lord, you've been good. You've been wonderful. You've been magnificent. We don't deserve all that you do. And yet you do it anyhow. Not because we're worthy, but because you're good and your mercy endureth forever. Thank you for that enduring mercy that continues to be extended towards us. Now, God, as we lift up our voices, as we lift up your word, be glorified. Be pleased with our sacrifice. In the mighty matchless name of Jesus the Christ, we do pray. Amen and amen. Saints of God, we want to mind our manners and of course we want to welcome any visitors that we have here in the house and we want to greet our family members. It's so good to see each and every one of you. There's some faces I haven't seen in a minute, but it's good to see y'all in the house on this chilly winter morning. Amen. And so we thank God for each and every one of you. If there's any visitors in the house, we're asking that you would please stand or just wave your hand. Little Miss Joy, God bless you. We had the privilege of meeting Joy earlier before service, and we are so happy to have you here fellowshipping with us. And we pray that something is said, something is done that's going to bless you and and we just want to love on you and make you feel welcome so that you'll come back and you'll visit us again, okay? And anytime you want to come, uh, make sure Deacon John brings you so that you can fellowship here with us. We love you with the love of the Lord, and we pray that we will see you again. Amen? Amen. Is there? Huh? Elise is here? Elise, hey, stand up, stand up so we can see you, praise God. So good to see you. It's hard to recognize folks with the mask and everything, but it is so good. Oh my goodness, what a prayer, prayers answered because there have been so many prayers going out for you. So many people have just had you on our hearts, and we are so, so, so delighted and joyful to see you today. Amen, amen. And we will continue to pray that God will continue to bless your life. God bless you. God bless you. And so, saints of God, we know how we do. And so let's send love all around the building. Send some love to the back. Give some ushers some. Our COVID protocol team in the back. Send some to the balcony. Send it and curve it in the booth so that Raymond gets a little. Send some love to the left and to the right. Send some love over to the musicians in the corner there. Throw some love all the way back to the choir, all the way back. And can your pastor get a little bit of love? Amen, amen. And we certainly send that love back to you. At this time, we're going to ask our music ministry to come and render a selection, after which we will have our announcements by Sister Fulmore. All over me I feel your spirit all over me it's in my head in my feet down in my feet oh I feel your spirit all over me I feel your spirit all over me I feel 
your spirit all over me. It's in my head, in my soul, down in my feet. Oh, I feel your spirit all over me. I feel your presence all over me. I feel your presence all over me. It's in my head, in my soul. It's down in my feet. Oh, I feel your presence all over me. Down in my feet, I feel your presence all over me. I feel it moving, moving in my soul. All right now, I feel your glory all over me. Glory all over me, it's in my head, in my soul, down in my feet. Oh, I feel your glory all over me. I feel your glory all over me. I feel your glory all over me. It's in my head, down in my feet. I feel your glory all over me. I feel your glory all over me. I feel your glory all over me. It's in my hands, in my soul, down in my feet. I feel your glory all over me. I feel it moving. Good morning, Ebenezer. Good morning. Sorry Again, we, have a, we are asking everyone that's going to attend service on Sundays to please call the church office by Friday, by noon on Fridays, so you can make sure your name is in the, on the list that the um, committee has. Again, <clears throat> we want to thank each and every one of you that donated to have the monitor replaced in the back. Your generosity is greatly appreciated. We are still looking for someone to volunteer for the treasure position. Please call the church office if you are interested. We have an important church meeting on Wednesday, February 16, 2022 at 7 p.m. via Zoom. Moderator Gamma will be, will be presiding. All members, please plan to attend. Ebenezer Community Development Corporation and Metro Community Center are partnering to sponsor an online auction on May 1st through the 8th, 2022. We are asking for the support of the church family. Please set aside money now so that you can bid on some amazing prizes. More information to come. Join us as we continue the journey through the Psalms doing Bible study every Wednesday at 7 p.m. via Zoom. January is our month of consecration and pastors asking the church family to fast and pray for God's direction and will. If you did not attend the te teaching about prayer and fasting, 
Each session was recorded and are available for anyone interested. <clears throat> if you need help getting the COVID-19 booster, please inform the church office or call Newbridge Medical Center for an appointment. Please continue to pray for the church family and reach out to our seniors who are displaced by Hurricane Ida and the sick and the shut-in. Our 2021 statements are, re are ready for pickup. If you need your statement, please call the church office and give us your name, and we will ensure that you get them. Again, we ask them for prayers for Brother Alvin Darby's family, who went home to be with the Lord. His services will be held here on Tuesday, January 25th. Viewing is from 9 to 11, and the service at 11. Thanks very much. Amen. Thank you, Sister Fulmore, for those announcements. And just to add and to reiterate, um, uh, please continue to keep uh, Brother Alvin's family in prayer. We know that Brother Alvin um, went home to be with the Lord, and um, he was um, on our trustee ministry. He, was, uh, he sang also with the male chorus. And not only that, but Alvin was not just one of the members here, but he was one of my friends. And we've known each other over three decades. We met at the University of Pennsylvania while we were studying there. And so keep his family in your prayers. And if there's any one of you, deacons, trustees, ministers, uh, that can assist us on Tuesday as we celebrate the life um, and legacy of Brother Alvin, uh, please let me know um, so that uh, we can give you assignments uh, for <clears throat> his home going. Uh, also, Saints of God, again, let me reiterate uh, that on February 16th at 7 o'clock, we will be having a very important church meeting. Uh, we want all members, all members, to be in attendance. We will be doing it fully virtual this time. Um, we felt that um, that would be easier um, for people to not only make it, but easier to manage. And so uh, we will be fully virtual this time. And the link, the Zoom link will be sent to all of the members. Um, it is important that everyone, everyone that is a member of Ebenezer Baptist Church be in attendance because we have uh, some uh, very important business uh, to take care of and some matters that have to be discussed. And so please put that on your calendar, mark it on your calendar, uh, Wednesday, February 16th at 7 p.m. Uh, so that we can uh, move forward in the things of God here at Ebenezer. I also want to thank the Ebenezer family, uh, for your prayers uh, from me, for traveling mercies, and also your prayers um, at the loss of my aunt, Myrtle Advent. She was the last surviving sister of my mother, and uh, there is only one um, of her siblings left now, and that is the youngest, my uncle Lenny. And so we traveled last week to Rocky Mount, North Carolina, for her home going and um, just continue to keep um, her children, her grandchildren in your prayers and her nieces and nephews and her brother um, as we adjust to not having her here on this earthly plane, but we look forward to seeing her again in the heavenly realm. I think that's all that I have. Um, it is tradition that on the, first, the fourth Sunday of January, we install our officers for the year, the coming year. And so I am going to ask if you are an officer, you will be serving as an officer in the year of 2022, uh, that you would come uh, to the altar now that you will stand before the people so that we can officially install you, all deacons, all trustees, 
all heads of ministries and those that will be um, serving in ministries, if you would come forward at this time so that we can officially install our officers. Ebenezer, can we give our officers a hand? <clears throat> to our officers for the year of 2022, when you step forth and you declare that you want to be an officer, you step out of the crowd and you step into a greater degree and a greater level of not only anointing, but responsibility. And so I charge each and every one of you today to walk worthy of the vocation for which you have been called. You should take advantage of every opportunity and seek out every opportunity to perfect what God has placed in your hands. You should be, as a leader of this church, one that the people can look at and find blameless, not perfect, because none of us are perfect. But you should be one that is blameless, that is faithful, that is accountable, and that is teachable. And so if the officers can turn towards the pulpit at this time, as I charge each and every one of you. Do you commit yourself to the work of God and to fulfill the vision that God has placed in this house? If you do, signify by saying, I will. Will you exercise your gifts, your talents, and your abilities to the glory of God and to the fullness of your capacity? If you agree, say, I will. Do you commit yourself to support this pastor and the vision of this ministry and that you will be committed, faithful to work towards fulfilling the vision that God has set to this house. If you agree, say, I will. Will you be faithful in every area of your life and a good steward, not only of your time, not only of your gifts, but of your tithe, if you believe and you agree? Say, I will. Now turn towards the congregation. Congregation, I'm going to ask you to stand. Because these leaders cannot exercise their leadership alone. They need your prayers. They need your support. And they need your cooperation in order for this to work. And so I ask the congregation and I charge this congregation, will you offer your full support to these leaders that have stepped out and have declared that God has called them to lead you as they are led by God's spirit? If you will, say we will. 
will you give them the respect that they are due? And will you respect the office that they hold? If you agree, say, we will. Will you offer your fervent prayers and your gifts and your talents and your abilities in order to support these leaders as they support the ministry of this church? If you agree, say, we will. Let us pray. Blessed God. We thank you for these leaders that have stepped forward and have declared, oh God, that they have been called to help to realize and actualize the ministry here at Ebenezer Baptist Church. Now, God, we pray, Lord, their strength. We pray, oh God, that you would give them divine wisdom to conduct the business and the ministry of this church. That you, oh God, would give them a fervent desire, oh God, to grow and to expand their horizons as they serve you in these uncertain times. That you, oh God, will give them vision beyond their experience and that you would lead them and guide them by your spirit. Lord, I pray that they faithfully serve, that they will be examples, oh God, to the people and that people will see them, oh God, and willingly follow. Lord God, I pray, Lord, that you by your spirit will bring us together and that, Heavenly Father, that we as a body, as a group, will push forward and to move forward into what you have for us. We know that great things are in store. Oh, God, let us be faithful to the work that you've called us to. In the mighty matchless name of Jesus the Christ, we do pray. Amen and amen. Ebenezer Baptist Church, I present to you your leaders for the year of 2022. May God bless and keep each and every one of us. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. We're going to ask the choir to give us another selection, after which we will hear what the Lord has to say for us, to us on today. You are my strength, strength like no other, strength like no other. Reaches to me. You are my strength, Lord. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. Reaches to me. You are my strength, you are my strength, strength like no other, strength like no other, reach it, you are my strength, you are my strength, strength like no other. Strength like no other reaches, Lord, in the fullness of your in the power, power of your you lift me up, Lord. Yes, Lord, you. In the fullness 
Beloved, there is a word from the Lord today, and I want to draw your attention to several verses found in the book of 2 Kings, chapter number 7. The book of 2 Kings, chapter number 7, and I will be reading verses 3 through 9. The book of 2 Kings, chapter number 7, and I will be reading verses number three through and including verse nine. When you have it, rise to your feet in reverence and respect for the word of God. The book of Second Kings, chapter number seven, verse number three. In the New King James Version, it reads like this. Now there were four leprous men at the entrance of the gate, and they said to one another, why are we sitting here until we die? If we say we will enter the city, the famine is in the city, and we shall die there. And if we sit here, we die also. Now therefore come, and let us surrender to the army of the Assyrians. And if they keep us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall only die. And they rose at twilight to go to the camp of the Assyrians. And to their surprise, no one was there. For the Lord had caused the army of the Assyrians to hear the noise of chariots and the noise of horses the noise of a great army. So they said to one another, look, the king of Israel has hired against us the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to attack us. Therefore, they rose and fled at twilight and left the camp intact, their tents, their horses and their donkeys, and they fled for their lives. And when these lepers came to the outskirts of the camp, they went into one tent and ate and drank and carried from it silver and gold and clothing and went to and went and hid them. Then they came back and entered another tent and carried some of some from there also and went and hid it. 
And then they said to one another, we are not doing right. This day is a day of good news, and we remain silent. If we wait until morning light, some punishment will come upon us. Now, therefore, come, let us go and tell the king's household. I want to sort of focus this time of teaching around verses three and four, where these men have a conversation. And they say, if we stay here, we gonna die. If we go into the city where the famine is, we gonna die. But if we take a risk and we go to the army of the Assyrians, maybe, just maybe, there's a chance that they'll have mercy on us and they'll let us live. And so I want to preach from the subject today. What do you have to lose? What do you have to lose? Let us pray. Blessed God, in the name of Jesus, we do thank you and we praise you another opportunity to stand at the sacred desk and to be your mouthpiece. Lord God, we've studied, we've prepared, we've labored over this word, but all will be of naught if you don't show up. And so blessed God, I pray that you would honor us with your presence. Holy Spirit, Infuse me with your magnificent power so that I speak only the words that you direct me to speak. And now, O oh God, I declare in this house to be good ground. When the seed of the word of God goes forth, that it will take root, that it will spring forth, and that it will produce not just good fruit, but fruit that remains. And that we will be transformed by the word of God. More into the image of Jesus Christ. Speak now, God, for your servant hears in the mighty matchless name of Jesus the Christ we do pray. Amen and amen. What do you have to lose? In my 57 years of life, and particularly in the 48 years of those 57 that I've been in Christ, I have learned that the Christian journey is not for the faint of heart. For if we are truly living a life of faith and have not decided to settle for a life of ease, there will be times and seasons where that faith will be tested. We know that there are spiritual benefits that come with the testing of our faith because the Bible tells us that the trying of our faith worketh patience. Yet, it does not make it any easier when we actually encounter these times of testing. Therefore, we must constantly, as the people of God, refer to the biblical record for examples that we can glean from those matriarchs and those patriarchs that came before us and that exercised their faith even in dire circumstances. In our time, in our text for this time of teaching, we find an example of some in unlikely men that decided to step out in faith uh, uh, regardless of their dire circumstances. 
When I envisioned this text as I was studying, I, I began to see a picture of the story of this text. And when I began to envision it, I saw two separate storylines of the same drama. Y'all know how TV dramas go. They show you one storyline over here, and then they flip to a different storyline over here. But by the end of the show, the two storylines converge. One storyline involved the prophet Elisha and the king of Israel. And the other storyline involves four lepers that were outside of the gates of the city. Both storylines eventually come together as this drama reaches its climax and its conclusion. Let me put the text in context for you. The story begins with a siege by Ben-Hadad, the Armenian, or in some texts it may say the Syrian king, and, he, and his armies lay siege against the city of Samaria. One of the tactics of siege warfare is to surround the city so that goods cannot go in or come out, therefore creating a famine so that the citizens within that city eventually have to surrender or they starve to death. Up until this point, in Israel's history, if you uh, read uh, Second Kings um, chapter 1 and on, Israel has been protected by God uh, and he has used the prophet Elisha to do it. In 2 Kings chapter number 6, God reveals the plans of the king of Aram to Elisha who then relays these plans to the king of Israel. Because they have inside information, the armies of Israel avoid the areas where the armies of Aram are located. And when the king of Aram, or the king of Syria, sends his troops to capture Elisha because they tell him, look, we are not the ones that are leaking information. There is a prophet that is telling all of the secrets, even the secrets that you whisper in your bedroom. The king is furious. And he says, go and get this prophet. And they go to capture Elisha, but when uh, they go to capture him, they are struck with blindness. And Elisha leads them into the city of Samaria, where they are now surrounded by the army of Israel. But instead of instructing the king of Israel to kill these men, Elisha tells him, set out the banquet tables. Feed these men and give them drink. And once they have eaten their full, once they have gotten married, send them back to their master. And after this army, the army of Aram, have gone back to their master, they ceased to raid uh, the, the people of Israel's territory, but only for a season. Kings, 2 Kings chapter number 6, verse 24. The Bible tells us that ben mobilized his army again. And he laid siege on the city of Samaria. This siege resulted in severe famine in Samaria to the extent that the scripture tells us, if you go back and read it, it tells us that two women were forced to consider eating the corpses of their deceased sons. The king of Israel was grieving. He didn't know what to do, and, and he clothed himself in sackcloth, and he, and, which signifies mourning over the situation. Uh, but instead of him exercising his faith and trusting God, the God that had saved him so many times before, the king of Israel directed blame towards God and specifically towards Elisha. 
2 Kings chapter 6, verse 31, the king of Israel declares these words. He says, may God deal with me ever so severely if the head of Elisha, the son of Shaphat, remains on his shoulders today. The king of Israel was going to execute the prophet of God. It's interesting because the king was content when he was the beneficiary of Elisha's prophetic ministry. This king was glad to receive the divine revelation concerning the plans of the king of Syria. The king was delighted when he benefited from the anointing of the prophet that protected and covered him and his armies. But the minute an economic downturn occurs and the armies of Assyria surround uh, the, the city of Samaria. The minute that things turn towards the worst, the one who Elisha protected now becomes the one who swears an oath of murderous intent against him. In desperate situations. If we do not exercise and stand in faith, desperate situations can cause us to do foolish things. Yet the lesson of the text is not that. I, I don't want to dwell on what the king did, but I want to lift up to you and, and, and so that we can glean this lesson on how Elisha responded to the king's threat on his life. In the beginning of chapter seven, God sends a prophetic word through the prophet Elisha that there was going to be an economic turnaround. Elisha declares to the king and the officer that is sent to kill him, he declares these words, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord tomorrow about this time, a sea of fine flour, shall be sold for a shekel and two seers of barley for a shekel at the gate of Samaria. So an officer on whose hand the king leaned answered the man of God and said, look, if the Lord would make the windows of heaven, could this thing be? And Elisha responds to him and said, in fact, you will see it with your eyes but you shall not eat of it. You'll see it, officer, that came to kill the prophet, but you will not be the beneficiary of what God is doing. Let me translate in common terms. What Elisha was saying here is he was like, listen, king, listen, Samarians, food is going to be real cheap soon. It's not only going to be cheap, it's going to be abundant really soon. But again, Elisha informs the officer that was sent to kill him by the king. You will see it happen, but you will die before you have an opportunity to benefit. Despite the threat against his life, Elisha was not distracted from his calling. Nor did he withhold his prophetic gift from the very ones that sought to kill him. Saints of God, when we are functioning in our gifting and the calling of God, we must learn, my brothers and sisters, to take both praise and criticism with a grain of salt. Because the enemy can use both praise and criticism to distract us what is, from what is really important, and that is our divine purpose from God. Even Jesus experienced this when the very people that at the beginning of the week cried out Hosanna when he was entering into Jerusalem. By the end of the week, those very people cried out, crucify him. The very people that Jesus was sent to save, the very people that benefited from his ministry may be the very ones at some point seeking to destroy him. But we cannot allow this 
to distract us from the assignment that God has placed on our lives. First Corinthians chapter 15 verse 58 admonish us to stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Faith declares that if we remain steadfast and unmovable, God will not only protect us from our enemies, but he will vindicate us from every tongue that rises up against us. Chapter number three, verse verse three, chapter seven, the scene now shifts and it shifts to the second storyline of this dramatic presentation. And it is from this storyline that I wish to lift up the points for this time of teaching. The Bible says, now there were four leprous men at the entrance of the gate of Samaria. And they said to one another, why are we sitting here until we die? If we say we will enter the city, the famine is there in the city and we'll die. If we sit here, we are gonna die. Now, therefore, come, let us surrender to the army of the Syrians. And if they keep us alive, we shall live. But if they kill us, we shall only die. These four men were social outcasts. As lepers, they were not permitted to be within the city walls of Samaria. They were the marginalized and the ostracized, and yet they were the ones that God used to bring deliverance to that whole city. The very people that marginalized and ostracized them were the very people that they saved and they rescued. And that is why, brothers and sisters, uh, we have to be careful how we prejudge folk that may not seem to fit into our vision and our, uh, 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 our example of what God's people should be. Because the truth of the matter is there's a whole lot of people that love God, particularly young people that love God, but may not exactly look like we want them to look. They may come into church with their pants sagging, wearing Tim's and a hoodie, and that's all right. They may come in seeking God in the best that they have, and it may be uh, uh, their club clothes because that's what they got. But these might be the very ones that bring salvation to the people of God. They may not fit the mold that we believe that they should fit. But the very people that we ostracize may be the ones that hold the key to our deliverance. That's why I say all the time when I give the invitation, doesn't matter what sin or skin you're in, we're going to receive you. And we're going to welcome you here at Ebenezer Baptist Church. And so how did these four lepers, these social outcasts, these, these people on the margins, how did these men exercise their faith and, and, and how did they not only save their own lives, but the lives of all of the inhabitants of Samaria? And what is it, my brothers and sisters, that we can learn from their example? I'm glad you asked. The first thing, if you're taking notes, write this down. The first thing that these men did in this situation is that they, they made an honest assessment of their situation. They, they made an honest assessment of their situation. Lepers had a conversation. They called the leper committee together and they said, listen. Why are we just sitting here doing nothing? What is our inactivity going to lead to? And they came to the conclusion unanimously, if we don't do nothing, 
we going to die. And they said, okay, let's continue to look at this situation. If we go towards the city, the city that kicked us out, if we go towards the city where the famine is, we going to die. Because chances are, if there's any food there, we're going to be the last ones to get it. So we're going to die. Then they said, okay, what other options do we have in this scenario? What other options should we consider? They said, okay, well, the only other place to really go is the enemy's camp. And so these are the options. We can go to the enemy's camp. We can say, listen, we surrender to you all. And the enemy can do one of two things. The Syrian army can say, you know what? Uh, we can keep y'all as slaves. We'll extend mercy and we'll bring you in. And they won't die. Or the, Assyr the Assyrians can say, you know what? Uh, y'all from Samaria, we going to kill you. And then they die. Out of this scenario, there is a one in four chance that these men live. A one in four chance that these men live. This is a desperate situation. But in desperate situations, we need to be honest with ourselves about what we are facing. For it is in this honest assessment of our circumstances that we discover the place where faith can be exercised. The Bible says it's clear that faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen, it is in the honest assessment of our situation that we evaluate and we identify that which we should hope for and therefore channel our faith towards it. Spite the odds. The second thing these lepers did after their assessment of the situation as they made a decision, somebody say a decision. In their assessment, three of the four options led to death. If we stay here, we die. If we go into the city, we die. If we go to the Sumerian camp, the, uh, the Syrian camp, we might die. Or if we go to the camp of the Assyrians and surrender, they may give us mercy and they might let us live. Again, for those of you who are good at math, that's a 25% chance of survival. And so these men said, listen, three out of the four options, we're going to die. What do we got to lose? If we take the option that gives us at least a small chance, a 25% chance that we survive this thing, then what do we have to lose? Because all the other options are death. Their decision to go to Syrian camp was based on their faith uh, to believe that the enemy would extend mercy even though they were the enemy. When wrestling with the decisions in desperate situations, make decisions based on faith and not fear. That's the second point there. Write this down if you're taking notes. Make your decisions based on faith and not fear. It is their faith that caused them. To not only talk and assess the situation, but it is their faith that drove them to get up and to go into the enemy's camp with the slim chance that when they got there, they would find mercy. There are times in the body of Christ that we over spiritualize our decisions and why do we do that we do that to mask our fear of making a decision 
heard and I've seen so many times throughout my 57 years of life that uh, people are saying, well, we we going to pray about it. We praying. Uh, 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 we going to pray. We going to pray. And yes, I'm not speaking against prayer. Yeah, you should pray. But sometimes we pray and God speak and we, oh, oh well, we just going to keep praying until God gives us the answer we want. Instead of moving out on the answer he gives. Pray for God to give us direction. And when God has already given us everything that we need. Let me give you a biblical example. When the children of Israel were between Pharaoh's army and the Red Sea. And Moses cried out to God. The people were complaining and Moses cried out. What was God's response to him? He was like, Moses. What you crying out to me for? Tell the people to move. Raise up your staff and stretch your hand over the sea and divide the waters so that the Israelites can walk through the sea on dry ground. I have already given you everything that you need and it's in your hands. Get up off your knees, exercise your faith and move forward this ain't the time to be praying Moses this is the time to move forward and when Moses lifted up his staff and stretched it before the sea the waters parted and the Israelites walked across on dry ground God was telling Moses, I have given you everything that you need for your deliverance, Moses. I have placed in your hand what you need, and I placed it in your hand when you were on the backside of a Midian desert. All you got to use and do is use what you got to get what you want. Inactivity, my brothers and sisters, is not a sign of faith. Inactivity is a precursor to failure. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, do something. Lepers, I'm almost done. Y'all a little quiet. I'm almost finished. Lepers arrived at the enemy camp. And to their surprise, nobody was there. The enemy had abandoned the camp. Why did the enemy abandon the camp? Because God had gone before them and had created fear within the army of the Syrians. God had released a sound from heaven that the Syrians interpreted as a mighty army uh, that the king of Israel had employed to come against them. And because they were scared, they left and they ran, but they left all their stuff in the tents. And the lepers went in on the outskirts of the first tent, and they went in and they ate like pigs. They ate their fill. And then they looked around and they saw valuable stuff. They saw clothes. They saw silver. They saw gold. And, and, and the lepers were like, all right, we going shopping. And they took the silver and they took the gold and they went and they hid it in a place where they could go back to it later. And then they went to another tent and they found some other stuff. And they said, well, we going to go shopping again. And they took the valuables from that tent and they took them and they hid them to go back later. And they realized something. The leper said, this is not a good thing that we're doing. Not taking the Syrian stuff. That was fine because I believe God set it up like that. But they were saying this is a. This is a day. This is an experience that we should not keep to ourselves. Because there are people that are suffering. And that are in lack. 
while we have found abundance. And so the lepers talk among themselves in the, the leopard council and they said, listen, uh, we need to share this news with the king in, a, in Samaria. We need to let the people know that the Syrian army has deserted the camp and there is a free for all of all of their riches. And so the lepers journeyed back to Samaria and they tell the king, they say, oh king, listen, we done hit the jackpot. We done hit the lottery. The army has left, they ran. We don't know why, we just know they not there anymore. But they left all their stuff. Tell all the folks in Samaria that are starving to death that there is not only food, but riches out. And when the people heard the news, as you can imagine, there was a stampede of people out of the city. It's probably like Black Friday at Walmart. Y'all know when them TVs go on sale, folks will go in your mouth. Every year, they fighting to get them discounted TVs at Walmart. And there was a stampede out of the city of people going to plunder the Syrian army's camp. But in that stampede, watch this, the very officer that was sent to kill Elisha was guarding the gate. And as the people stampeded through, they trampled him to death. Fulfilling the prophecy of Elisha that the officer would see the prophecy, but he would not be the beneficiary of the prophecy. If I, if I had some time, I would just throw this little thing in. It's not a, a part of my notes, but I, I, if y'all give me 15 seconds, I'm just going to throw it on you and go on. You got to be careful of the people that you listen to. It was the king of Israel that sent the officer to kill Elisha. Yet the officer was the one that died. You got to be careful. The people that you connect and you listen to. The last lesson that I want you all to learn from these lepers, and I'm going to be done. Is that because of their faith, they assessed the situation. They left the place of sure death and moved to a place of possible death. That was a faith walk. When they did that, God went before them, cleared out the army. This is what God will do. If you exercise your faith, your faith can transport you from a place of scarcity to a place of abundance. Your faith can transport you and God can do an immediate work like he did here your faith can transport you from a place of scarcity to a place of abundance when we exercise our faith the Bible declares that we serve a God that can do exceedingly and abundantly above all we can ask or think. That means whatever we can imagine God doing, God can do much more than that. We don't have the capacity to visualize what God can do in our lives. When we exercise our faith saints of God when dealing with impossible odds honestly assess your situation once you assess your situation decide to act based on your faith and 
not fear. And then lastly, watch God bless you abundantly. Watch God blow your mind. Watch God do more than you even ask or expect him to do. Watch God open all of the access of heaven and give you access to the riches of heaven. What do you have to lose? Accept a chance to see God's miracle manifest in your life. Everybody standing and resting on your feet. There may be someone here that wants to accept Jesus Christ as your personal savior. Today is a day of salvation. You've heard the word of the Lord. The Lord is speaking to you. The Bible says the heart, not your heart. If you have never asked Jesus Christ to come into your life, you can receive him today, right now. And I guarantee you that he will change your life and he will blow your mind. But it takes a step of faith. And that first step is to come down this aisle and we will take you through the sinner's prayer and you can be saved today. The Bible says if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead, we will be saved. My second appeal is this. If you have already accepted Jesus Christ as personal savior, but you don't have a church home. You don't have a consistent place where you are connected in, where you're growing and you're learning and you're under teaching and you're using your gifts and talents and abilities. The devil has deceived so many people. And he has convinced them that the church is no longer relevant. That devil is a liar. The church is even more relevant now than it ever is. And so you need a church home today. If you don't have a church home, we offer Ebenezer Baptist Church to you. We are not a perfect church. I say that at every invitation. We are not a perfect church. But we are a church that serves a perfect God. We're a church that's trying to get this thing right in the eyes of God. If you would like to join with us, we welcome you. Like I said before, whatever sin or skin you're in, we'll accept you. We'll take you because God accepts you. Is there one? Let the church say amen. Oh, let the church say Let the church say, say amen. God has spoken. So let the church, let the church say, say amen. Oh, let the church say amen. Let the church say God has spoken. So let the church say amen. Can we all say it together everywhere in the building? Oh, let the church say. Let the church say. God has spoken. So let the church say amen. God has spoken. So let the church say amen. Oh, God.
God has spoken. So let the church say amen. Come on, put your hands together for God. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I pray that that word blessed you, those that are here and those that will be viewing uh, via Facebook or a YouTube channel. Pray that that word blessed you and enriched your soul and will remind each and every one of us that when we get in situations that seem dire, assess that situation, exercise your faith and do something. Watch God do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think. Before we leave, beloved, uh, if you have your tithes and your offerings, um, if you have your envelope um, that you, as we egress out, then you can drop it in the tithing box there in the back between the doors. Uh, you can also uh, continue to return the tithe unto the Lord via our Tithely app or uh, via PayPal, or you can just drop uh, your tithe off uh, during normal business hours during the week. I want to remind each and every one of you that it is a God, our responsibility to God and to each other to financially support the ministry here uh, at the Ebenezer Baptist Church so that we can uh, go out and win the world for Christ. Brothers and sisters, please keep in mind all of the announcements for this week. Those of you who can be here on Tuesday for the homegoing celebration of Alvin Darby, uh, please come and show our support as Ebenezer family uh, to his family, his, his wife Kira and his son Karan. And if there are any officers that will be present, please let me know uh, so that we can schedule you into different slots in the program. Spread the word, beloved, that every member of Ebenezer Baptist Church needs to be at the church meeting on February 16th at 7 p.m. Uh, the Zoom link will be sent by email uh, to all of the members and by text message so that everyone will have access to it. And so I'm asking everyone, please be there so that we can conduct the business of the church and move the church forward. Always remember that we are empowered disciples, equipping God's people to maximize ministry. That is the vision that God has placed in this house. And we, as the people of God, are responsible to God to do everything that we can to be disciples, to help equip God's people, and to maximize the ministry that he has placed to our hands. And lastly, love one another. Be kind to one another, for it is by this that all men, women, boys, and girls will know that we are Christ's disciples if we have love one for another. Everyone standing for the benediction. Lord, we do thank you for this opportunity in your presence. We pray that you are pleased with our worship, with our praise, with our sacrifice, and with the word. And now, O oh God, as we leave this place, but never your presence, keep us as only you can. Strengthen us, O oh God. Continue to be with us and to go before us. And all that we have to do this week and oh Lord, if it is your will, bring us back together next Sunday so we can celebrate your goodness that we have experienced all week. Lord, we love you and we thank you. In the mighty matchless name of Jesus the Christ, we do pray. Let every heart say amen and amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Love you all.
and all the glory. 